most exciting destination in all of northern Wisconsin. LCL Casino Lodge and Convention Center Hayward. LCO. Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Navy News Update. It's Friday, September 16th. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for today from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. Roger Buffalohead, an enrolled member of the Ponca Tribe, who led the nation's first Department of American Indian Studies at the University of Minnesota, founded in 1969, passed away on September 6th at the age of 77. Buffalohead was a mentor for countless students over the years, including Hattie Kaufman, a member of the Nez Perce tribe, who became a national correspondent for CBS News. Over the years, Buffalohead ran the university's American Indian Learning Resource Center, worked with the Upper Midwest American Indian Center in Minneapolis, and taught at Washington State University, the University of Minnesota Duluth, and the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico, among others. He ended his teaching career at Minneapolis Community and Technical College. Buffalo Head was born near White Eagle, Oklahoma on May 30, 1939. The ninth of ten children, he was the first to attend college at Oklahoma State University, then graduate school at the University of Wisconsin with a Woodrow Wilson Scholarship, receiving his degree in 1966. A forthcoming Native American restaurant in the Minneapolis-St. Paul, Minnesota area just set a crowdfunding record. The Kickstarter campaign from Chef Sean Sherman, a.k.a. The Sous Chef, brought in nearly $150,000 from over 2,000 backers in 30 days. As the Star Tribune reports, that's more individual backers than any other restaurant to ever raise funds on that platform. Sherman specializes in the first people's cuisine, utilizing ingredients like native plants, wild game, fish, corn, beans, and squash, but no dairy, sugar, or wheat. He already owns and operates a food truck named Tatanka Truck and hosts frequent pop-ups and catering events in Minnesota and the surrounding states. The restaurant will be called the Sioux Chef, an indigenous kitchen, and it will also house a culinary education center for indigenous peoples. A Black Hills philanthropist commissioned and donated a 50-foot tall statue that has been installed in Chamberlain, South Dakota along the banks of the Missouri River. The stainless steel statue named Dignity depicts a young Native American woman receiving a star quilt. Black Hills artist Dale Lamphere, who created the piece, says it represents the pride and strength and durability of Native cultures. He says he worked with three Lakota models in the process of creating the statue, which drivers on Interstate 90 will be able to see day and night from the road. Nike has announced that grants totaling $495,000 are being distributed through the N7 Fund's latest funding cycle to 32 nonprofit organizations dedicated to improving health and wellness in North America tribal communities. Since its launch in 2009, the N7 Fund has provided more than $4 million in grants to 185 communities, schools, and nonprofit organizations across the U.S. and Canada. And seven fund grants are a one-year awards that support organizations and projects creating a world where physical activity, play, and sport are highly valued for youth ages 8 to 18. The N7 Fund's 2017 grant cycle opened on September 15th. Apply by December 15th of this year at n7fund.com forward slash apply forward slash. The fourth N7 Sports Summit took place September 9th through the 10th at Nike World Headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon. The newest N7 ambassador, Taboo of the Black Eyed Peas, kicked off the welcome reception on September 8th. Taboo's heritage includes Shoshone, and he is passionate about advancing the work of Nike N7 to help inspire Native youth to live a healthier lifestyle. In Hopkins, Michigan, Native Americans of the Potawatomi and Ojibwe tribes are bringing rare strains of traditional crops that were on the verge of extinction back from the dead and are now thriving. Farmers are receiving help from the Zizak Foundation, which describes itself as a nonprofit organization of the Gun Lake Band of Potawatomi, dedicated to enriching our community through education, preservation, and perpetuation of our tribe's rich culture, arts, history, and living traditions. The Foundation's Seed Lending Library is on the center of the comeback story. For more information, you can check out zizak.org. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.